Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 27. Today we're talking about trig functions. So add that to our list of different functions that we've studied, right? Linear functions, reciprocal functions, uh, exponential functions, log functions. We're amassing quite a list of them. And trig functions, of course, are a kind of function. Um, and we know that there are three trig functions that we talk about a lot. There's sine, and there's cosine, and there's tangent. I know you know this. But what we're introducing today is that you can have positive and negative values for sine and cosine. And I will explain exactly how that all works out. All right? What I want you to draw, do is draw a pretty big quadrant on your paper, because we're going to be drawing a lot of pictures on this, right? Um, and it doesn't matter exactly what degrees, but draw yourself a nice big triangle on this side. I put my diagonal about in the middle, and here's our angle, obviously. Now, this measurement, we can see it's here on the x-axis. It's on the positive side, right? Here's the origin. This is the positive numbers. This is the negative. So that tells us that the measure of this side is positive. And we also know that this is the positive side, right? So this number will also be positive, right? Okay, cool. Now let's go and draw one in this quadrant. Again, we don't have to be too precise with these angles, but just give yourself room to see what you're doing. Now, when we move on the x-axis to this side of the origin, this number becomes negative. See where I'm getting? And then this value is still on the positive side of the y-axis, so that's still positive. Make sense? We're just thinking about what we know about number lines in uh, Cartesian coordinate systems, and it's not complicated, right? Now down here, again, our angle's like that. This number we know is negative, right? It's on the negative side of the x-axis. And now we're measuring down here, and that's the negative side of the y-axis. Okay? So positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative. And then over here, this one's positive. But this side is in the negative zone this time. Okay? So this is nothing specific to trig, equal, to, to trig functions. You know this, that positive, positive, these are just the values of any points that you would find here too, right? This is just basic stuff. Now, what I want to tell you is that the hypotenuses, the hypotenuse, Hypotenuse is always positive. And there's a theoretical, complicated explanation I could give you, but I'm going to spare you that, and I'm just going to tell you the hypotenuse is always positive. So I'm going to put positive signs on all of these hypotenuse, right? Now, let's remember that... Let's just remember our trig functions. Sine, cosine, tangent, Oscar had a hold over Arthur. I didn't need that line there. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a smaller version of the grid, and I'm gonna write some things in all of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna go to the first quadrant here, Right, we call this the first quadrant. And we're gonna look at sine as a trig function. By the way, this sine means positive, negative. It's not sine like sine, cosine, tangent, right? Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is this, and the hypotenuse is that. That's two positives. That tells me that in the first quadrant, any angle that's a first quadrant angle is going to have a sign that is positive. 
Cool, right? Let's check out what happens with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side in the first quadrant is here, and the hypotenuse is here. Again, that's positive over positive. That means our cosine is going to have a positive value. Now let's look at tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, right? Over Arthur, opposite over adjacent. They're both positive, so tangent's going to be positive as well. First quadrant, super easy and user-friendly. It's just positive, positive, positive. Let's go to the second quadrant now, and let's see what's happening with sine over there. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite side is positive. The hypotenuse is always positive. So sine in the second quadrant, again, is going to be positive. Don't worry, our luck's about to change. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative. Hypotenuse is positive. That simplifies to a negative. So cosine in the second quarter quadrant is negative. Hmm. 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 All right, let's look at tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. One's positive, one's negative. That means that's going to be negative, right? Two negatives make a positive, but one negative stays negative. That's the same old rule, right? Okay, so what we're developing is a understanding of how these values are created. And then this is a summary where we're mentally comparing positives and negatives based on the different sides involved. And in each quadrant, we're coming up with a rule as to whether sine, cosine, and tangent will be positive or negative in that quadrant. As you can imagine, we have a lot more negatives to come, so let's keep going. In the third quadrant, and that's what I'm doing here, is I'm making the quadrant numbers. Sine is opposite minus over hypotenuse, always positive. So that means sine is going to be negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, the adjacent side is negative. Hypotenuse is positive. Okay, that's minus. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's two negatives. So those are going to come together to make a positive. Hmm. All right. One more to go. Sine, cosine, and tangent. And this is quadrant four. Um, if you don't remember, we usually number these one, two, three, four are the quadrants, right? Which makes sense because with polar vectors, we're always thinking in that way. Um, what was I going to say about that? Oh, and we usually use Roman numerals to depict them, all right? Um, okay, so let's look in the fourth quadrant. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's going to be negative. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Those are both positive in the fourth quarter. Fourth, yeah, fourth quadrant, fourth quarter. I'm watching a football game. Don't mind me. I'm Pete Carroll, and I'm talking about the fourth quarter. Um, and then tangent is negative it's opposite, yeah, opposite over adjacent, negative over positive, and that comes out to negative, right? All right, so now we know how to take these values for the individual sides, remembering that hypotenuse is always positive, and use the pairs to combine them and see whether the combination is going to be positive or negative. And we can see that every function has two positives and two negatives. Sine is positive here and negative here. Cosine is positive here and negative here. And tangent goes kitty corner. Huh, interesting pattern, right? Now, you could memorize you could memorize this and work them out every time. Okay? You could memorize this, but that's a lot of extra writing. What I do is I net this down to a simple list I remember that I'm always going to go sine, cosine, tangent in all four of them, and I leave that word off. What I do is I remember 
That one is easy. It's all positives. Now I do this side. And this side is kind of fun because it goes positive, negative, 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 positive. Right? I just remember that whole side as a pattern. And then over here, it's the only combination that I don't have so far. So it's negative, positive, negative. Okay? There isn't a quadrant that has all three negatives, so we'll throw that one out. But here, the negatives at the top, at the bottom, and in the middle. All right? So if you can memorize this and just remember it's sine, cosine, tangent, that's the order. That's a lot easier than working through all of this every time you have to figure out the sine of a trig function, right? Does that make sense? Okay. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about that. Oh, I know one other thing I want to point out. Whenever we're working from our angles here and we want to know the adjacent side, it's always this axis, right? Because there's our angles. It's always this line. So sometimes we associate, and this is the x-axis, we associate this with cosine, which is also the adjacent side, right? So uh, we can associate the x-axis with cosine, which is the adjacent side. Conversely, this one that is the y-axis, we associate this with sine, which is the opposite, right? Because at this angle, this is the opposite, this is the opposite, this is the opposite, this is the opposite. And those are all measured on this axis. So associating sine with y and cosine with x is something that we're gonna do more and more as we go, all right? So I wanna add that detail to this chart so you'll have all that information. What we're going to do now is practice finding trig function values all around the quadrant using just our two friendly re reference triangles, using just the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90. But we're gonna work on the, getting the correct sign and we're gonna rely on this chart to help us make the calculations, all right? So let's flip. And where's my first problem? Example, there's three problems and they're not very long. This is, a, this is kind of a little bit of a mind bender lesson, but the calculations are at heart. It says evaluate four times the cosine of 135 degrees. Okay. So this we see, this is just a uh, kooky little coefficient. And all we have to do is, for our last step, we'll just multiply whatever we get for this. We'll just multiply it times four. Okay? So we don't have to worry about that right now. That's just the last step. What we want to do is we want to figure out what's the cosine of 135 degrees. Well, at this point, I don't know. So we better draw a picture. So... Here's my quadrant, and now I need to start measuring out the degrees. This much is 90, this much is 180. That's too much, right? I want this, because we're measuring from this direction. I want to get these 90, but then let's see. 135 minus the 90 that's the first quadrant gives me 45. Oh, okay. So I can see this 90 plus this 45 add up to give me the 135 degrees that I'm measuring. This angle, which is called the reflex angle, uh, John usually calls it the related angle, not the reflex angle, so let me, let me use that. Different authors do different things. I wanna make it match. The related angle. That's what this is. This tells us to find 135 degrees, and we're talking about a 45 degree angle right here, right? And at first you think, well, that doesn't make sense, but 45 degrees is the related angle because the two of them are 
supplementary, aren't they? They add up to 180. Okay, so now we're looking at this 45 degree triangle. We recognize it and we know that it's one, one, square root of two, right? Those are the ratios of the sides. In our first picture, here's another version of it. We didn't put any angle measurements on this, which we don't really need in order to talk about just the values. But we can see here that we're working in this second quadrant, right? So we can see, all right, well, here's the origin. I can easily find the plus and minuses. I know this is gonna be minus and this is gonna be plus and hypotenuse is always positive. So I can put the signs on just like that, can't I? And then I wanna find the cosine of 135 Cosine, I better write my list, right? Sine, cosine, tangent. Oscar had a hold over Arthur. I want cosine. So I want the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 135 degrees equals the adjacent, which is minus one, over the hypotenuse, which is positive square root of two, right? That feels good. And then, okay, then that's that. And then all we have to do is multiply it by four. These simplify to just a minus one over the square root of two. And so that gives me four over the square root of two. And now I better rationalize this little puppy dog, right? Four square root of two over two. Ugh, one last simplification. Divide both of those by two. And our final answer is that four times the cosine of 135 degrees equals two times the square root of two. Minus, I should never written that. Um, because I'm multiplying it here, and this should have been a minus. I should have put the minus right there, right? So minus two square root of two. Does that make sense? The whole purpose of the whole lesson, and I dropped the minus sign. Okay, now, hopefully that makes sense to you. What I'm going to show you in the next lesson is that instead of writing out all of these pluses and minuses here, we can use that little summary chart and do it the easy way. It's a little bit faster. So let's try the next one. This is example 27.2. And this time we're trying to find minus two times the cosine, oops, cosine of minus 150 degrees. We do not need to put a parenthesis before the word the word kind of acts like a dividing line between this coefficient and the value of our angle. So we don't need um, to put a parenthesis before the word. Okay, so we know what we're gonna do. We're gonna multiply whatever we get for our answer right here by minus two. We're going to focus on finding the cosine of negative 150. All right. Remember this minus sign tells us to go backwards. We're gonna start here and we're gonna go this way. This much is 90, this much is 180. We don't wanna go all the way to here, do we? We want another 60, right? We want this much to be 60 because then these two go together to give us the 150. And then our related angle is the 30 degrees right there. Okay, that gives us a familiar friend. We know that this is two and this is one and this is square root of three, but I'm not gonna worry about the pluses and minuses yet. I'm gonna just add that in at the very end. Well, not the very end, but close to the end. So now I know cosine equals, Oscar had a hold. I'm not gonna write the whole list this time, right? So now from here, I wanna find the adjacent square root of three over the hypotenuse, positive two, okay? And then the last thing that I need to do is multiply this by this negative two and I'll put it over one. However, 
I want to find the sign for this. And rather than fiddling around with all the pluses and minuses here, I'm just going to remember my overall chart. Plus, 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 that's the easy one. Then this one has the long stretch of minuses bookended by the pluses. And then this one is the plus in the middle. This is the hardest one to remember. All right, I've got cosine in the third quadrant. So this is my third quadrant list, right? One, two, three, oh, I'm sorry, this is the third quadrant. See how it should match, right? I'm working down here, so my sign is down here. And I know these are in order by sine, cosine, and tangent. That tells me that cosine in the third quarter is gonna be negative. So I add a negative sign to my calculation at the end. That just saves me a little bit of trouble because as these problems get more and more complicated, we're gonna have so many different pieces floating around. So it really helps if you can just memorize this and scribble it on your page it's kind of the same degree of usefulness as this, right? It's just really nice to be able to scribble this down when you're trying to sort out all this craziness and be like, okay, there's something I know for sure. This works the very same way. It's something we know for sure. So cosine in the third quadrant is the second one. It's negative. And so these cancel, these cancel, and our final answer minus two times the cosine of minus 150 degrees equals square root of three. And that's a positive value. Yay. It's positive because this was minus, but that's minus, so it turned into a positive. All right, so that's how we can shortcut these problems just a little bit by using the chart. And here's one more. Example 27.3, we're supposed to find five-thirds of the cosine of 300 degrees. Okay, let me draw our grid. 300 degrees, well, 90, 180, 270, plus we'll need 30 more to get to 300, won't we? So that means this, right, 90, 90, 90 gives us 270 plus three, 30 more gives us 300. And then our related angle would be 60 degrees, right? Because these all add up to 300. Make sense? Okay, so there's our 30, 60, 90. And let's get this. This is the original side, right? I'm imagining that uh, the way we drew it when we first derived the 30, 60, 90, I know that this is the side that wasn't touched, and this is the side that gets chopped in half, and this is the side that was in the middle of the triangle. So I get my numbers on there. And then I make my plus minus chart. I'm making it bigger than I usually do. There's the easy ones. Then I start here and I go plus, minus, 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 plus. I know they're in order, sine, cosine, tangent. And then this is the weird one. And then I also know sine, cosine, tangent, Oscar had a hold over Arthur. I bet you're at the point where you think, I don't need to write this out every time. I understand it. I've I know it really well, it's in my head. You will soon feel the same way about these values. Okay, but I do recommend just go ahead and write them out so you've got them. Okay, cosine of this triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is one, hypotenuse is two. So I'm just gonna write that fraction and that's times, it's, what did I say? It is one over two. And now we need to find the value of cosine in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is the middle one, so it's positive. Make sense? And then we just multiply that through and we get five over six. Now, we're not interpreting these answers. We don't know what, what that's good for. We don't know why we're multiplying it by five thirds, but that's okay. 
The deeper understanding always comes later. In the beginning, we're just looking to understand the calculations, all right? So this chart, just to summarize what we learned in this lesson, by thinking just logically about which values will be positive and negative, we can use our ratios to figure out whether the answer will be positive or negative. And then we made a chart that summarizes the values in the proper order, sine, cosine, tangent, in each of the four quadrants. By memorizing this, we can shortcut our work. We don't have to draw the triangles and think so hard about the pluses and minuses every time. We can just jump to knowing, okay, tangent in the second quarter is minus, sine in the fourth quarter is minus, right? We, the answers are just right there in front of us. And as long as we know how to get to these, we will be just fine using this chart, right? You know how to get to them if you need to but we can use the chart and rely on it. We're gonna eventually merge our charts together into one big mega chart. And that's an exciting day. But for now, memorize this and make sure you can recreate that and then solve these simple problems. Guess what? That's all I have to tell you on Listen 27. I'm sorry, I know it's been fun, but it's done. Don't worry, 28 I think is a little bit more. 28, I know it's not terrible, but it has some of those wacky rate problems in it. So get psyched up for that. Goodbye.